Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel and if you're new here then welcome, I do hope you like the video. Um, as usual if you do like my video and any of the other content that I'm doing please do give a thumbs up and subscribe, it really does help out. Uh, but let's go on to this piece. So this piece is a crocodile skull as you can see and I have done this on toned paper. I've done it on Strathmore series toned. I have grey or so I will have the description um, below about the paper that I'm actually using um, but it's, I actually really like it. It's really nice quality paper. It holds up really well with acrylic paint which is really helpful and I find it's really nice to actually have like a background colour already there that I don't actually have to paint on. It makes it a lot easier and there's nowhere near as much prep work as there is with canvas because obviously the, the canvas you've got to apply your gesso and then you've got to do your background colour and things like that. So there's a lot more stages to it. So this piece was really nice to be able to relax a bit more to take my time over and not stress about having to prep the paper as much as what you have to do with canvas, which was really nice. <laughs> The actual idea for this crocodile skull is from um, Affinity for Commander. They're a YouTube channel that talks about Magic the Gathering and they were talking about some new cards that came out and one of the cards they had up they were showing literally just for the flavour text. I'm really sorry if you can hear all this background noise. My cats are playing with some washing which I don't even know what she's doing. So yeah, so I apologise if you can hear all the background noise. Um, anyway, so back to Affinity for Commander. So they were doing this rev um, review on a magic set on all the different cards that had come out. And one of them was a crocodile, which they only had up for the flavour text on the card. And I thought it was really cool. And it got me wanting to draw a crocodile skull. If anyone's interested in Magic Gathering, then I'll have them linked below. Um... But yeah, obviously this is not about Magic the Gathering, it was just where I got the idea for this piece from. And then I decided, as usual, to add in all my botanical leaves and stuff and the signature eye rose, which is where the name Curious Roses come from. Now, this is actually what I want to talk about in the main bit of this voiceover, um, is where I actually came up with... Curious Roses and that being a signature as part of all of my pieces as it has been for God, a while now actually. Uh, I'd actually have to look it up as to how long it's been but probably maybe almost a year that I've been doing these which is quite cool. Actually no, probably longer than that. So this originally came from a piece that Happy D Artist had done. So it will, her piece she did back in October 17, I don't know if that's when I found it or what, but she did that piece back in October 2017 and it was of an eye, just an eye. And it was of a really dark colour palette, it was like um, purples and greys and she had it so there was like a spider and a spider web around the eye and I really really loved the concept of it I thought it was really really pretty um, but I didn't have money to buy it at the time to buy a print of it or anything and I thought you know what sod it why don't I just draw it myself you know I draw portraits all the time this is back when I was doing portraits and I thought why not I love drawing eyes you know this should be pretty easy turned out it was way harder than what I thought it would be and my piece didn't look anywhere near as good as Happy Diotis, but that's not surprising because she's an amazing oil painter. Um, again, her, she'll be linked below. Um, but the actual idea of drawing just an eye, I really enjoyed. Like, I enjoyed it so much more than what I thought I would. And I then started just drawing eyes on their own quite a lot. Uh, it's always been the main part of a portrait that I really enjoyed but I've never actually taken the time to draw them separately and on their own and with different things. So I would try draw them. So I did them with cobwebs a few times, trying to get that right, um, with feathers and just all sorts of random things that I decided. And then I decided to do a flower because, you know, why not? I like flowers. And I really enjoyed the way it turned out. So then I started playing around with different types of flowers and drawing it like that. And my favourite ended up being a rose. Now, roses in general aren't my favourite flower. Um, I don't actually think I have a favourite flower, but it ended up being a rose. And I think that's just because roses can come in so many different colours. 
which made it more easy to be able to do multitude of different colours and stuff when I was trying to draw these. But also because they are a lot more simple, I found, to draw. I mean, they're basically just a circle with loads of flat, loads of petals going around, you know, that doesn't get much more simple than that. And I then decided to draw this out and I was really pleased with how it looked and I put it up on Instagram and it actually did quite well. I was really surprised at the response. So like for me, quite well back then was probably like 10 likes. Although to be fair, even now, 20 likes is doing pretty well for me. So yeah, I really liked it. So I thought, you know, why don't I start doing this more? So that's kind of when I moved from portraits into other stuff. Although there will be a separate video going into a lot more in depth of why the big change from portraits to then animals, which is something completely different. But I then started doing all these roses with like bees around them and then like little caterpillars and just little things trying to make like a little scene out of it. And I really enjoyed it was doing really well. I was really enjoying it. Uh, this was back when I was using soft pastel more as well, which again, that's going to be a separate video of why I did the change from soft pastel to acrylic painting. And yeah, it just took off really well. I noticed that I was getting a lot more interaction on my Instagram page from doing things like this. And I was able to experiment a bit more and I was doing a lot more world building which is something I hadn't really looked into and it just progressed from there to the point now where I'm a lot more confident in what I'm doing. I can do much bigger pieces and feel a lot happier with incorporating different things so like mixing crystals and things like that into my artwork and th things that I would never have taken the time to draw before um, I'm now a lot happier with doing. And it, so originally it just kind of progressed because, okay, people seem to like it on Instagram and I was really happy with that. But then I realised more and more that it was more of an interpretation of myself. Like, I am a naturally curious person. I like to know everything. If there's something to know, I'm questioning it. And, you know, my partner gets really fed up because I will, he'll be like, oh, okay, I'm busy tomorrow. And I'm like, oh, really? What are you doing? And he'll be like, um, I'm doing this. And I'll be like, oh, why are you doing that? And he's like, because I want to, you know, like what's with the million questions? But that is who I am. And it's even the same at work. Like I'm always wanting to know things. I'm always trying to go on like different courses and just try and expand my knowledge. That is just who I am. I am, I suppose the other way of doing it is I'm just incredibly nosy, but I like to prefer curious. I think that's a much politer way of saying this. Um, so that's when I kind of just thought, hmm, curious roses. I liked the ring to that because I liked the fact that my personality is naturally very curious and then the other side of my personality is that I very much like to watch things which might seem a bit creepy but it's not meant that way it's just I'm because I'm so curious I like to see what's happening in the world around me I like being watching people that watching the way they interact with things I like watching life you know go by it's something very relaxing about it for me and that's where I realised that this eye, it's not just an eye that I'm drawing for the sake of it just because I like drawing eyes, but it's more almost like it's my eye in the worlds that I'm creating so that I can observe these worlds. And the rows kind of work because they're delicate enough to be a part of my pieces, but they've got thorns and stuff to protect them as they're needed, uh, depending on what situation they're in. And I really liked, I really liked that. And as I've been doing them more, especially as I've been trying to grow my art more, I've definitely explored that concept more when I'm thinking about it, like when I'm painting them about me being a part of this world and perceiving this world. And it's through my eyes that you're able to see how I view the world and my interpretation of the world. And so like with this crocodile thing, like I took one thing from Magic the Gathering that was done on a YouTube channel to this whole thing about a crocodile skull and it being almost like life and death. Like so I always try and do a skull with something growing. So whether it's leaves, whether it's mushrooms, whether, you know, something like that, there's always got to be something growing from it because I see that, you know, death is a natural part of life and it's, you know, from death, other things are able to grow. And so I am showing you that and showing you that world and that my curious rose that I do is 
my way of being able to put that as part of my artwork like it's almost like a portal into a little part of that world that I see um this probably sounds crazy um but it, that's that's the way I see it. that's my interpretation so that's kind of how this all grew from something as simple as an eye drawing well painting actually it was an oil painting that Happy D artist did back in October 2017 to it now being uh, I within a rose that's like an essential part of my artwork that I'm always trying to improve I'm always trying to improve on like the position of it the composition the colors I do really want to work on making them look a lot more lifelike because I feel like sometimes they can look a bit flat but that's practice with time as with anything um so yeah I hope this kind of like explains a bit more as to why Curious Roses and why there is always an eye within a rose in all my pieces unless it's a commission piece um, and they don't want it which is absolutely fine by me. I've had a couple so a portrait obviously they didn't want it a part of because it's a portrait and I get that but then I've had another commission piece and they actually requested that because they really like it so commissions is always like one of those things if you want it in there I would happily do it but if not it's no biggie but all the other pieces that I do for myself that end up as prints and bookmarks and things like that they're always going to have that because that is who I am that's my personality being brought into the artwork not just with my artwork style but with like an essential thing so like there is an artist on Instagram whose name escapes me but I'll definitely have them in below because I love their artwork but always does a hummingbird literally in every piece you'll see there's always a hummingbird in some way in that piece and I thought that was amazing and I've realized over time that my Curious Rose is my version of the hummingbird so but yeah so anyway I hope you've enjoyed this ramble and if you haven't um, as always I do apologize I'm feeling a little bit more confident with how the videos and stuff are going I don't think in this piece there's been any weird strobe lighting hopefully this voiceover has come out really well so we are slowly slowly getting there but if anyone's got any tips or suggestions on things I'd like to see in the videos then please let me know as always um, although heads up I do record these weeks in advance so if I don't get round to adding it for a little while yet it's not that I'm ignoring you it's just that I edit very far in advance um <laughs> but that's just because I'm a bit of a control freak as well as being weirdly observed <laughs> like observing everybody else um but yeah I hope you all have a lovely day thank you for taking the time to watch this video let me know your thoughts below and as always if you like this then please give a thumbs up and subscribe um, otherwise, stay curious.